In India, more than 100 million people have diabetes and another 100 million are likely to have pre-diabetes. So this diabetes, pre-diabetes, insulin resistance, all these terms are often used together, but sometimes we may not know the differences. An estimated 101 million people in India were detected with diabetes. 136 million were found to be pre-diabetic. So in today's video, I'll explain to you what exactly is insulin resistance, why it happens, and should you be worried about it. And don't worry, I'll also give you tips to keep it under control. Insulin resistance is a condition where the body cells do not respond or react well to insulin. And it can lead to serious issues ranging from diabetes to heart problems to leg attacks and even gangrene. But the good news is that insulin resistance is primarily a lifestyle problem and you can definitely reverse it. But first, let's clear the basics for our understanding. Insulin resistance happens when your body cells stop reacting to insulin. Insulin is a hormone secreted by the beta cells of pancreas in response to raised blood sugar levels. So by doing this, what insulin achieves is it pushes the glucose from the bloodstream to the cells which can then use it for energy. So obviously it's a natural phenomenon that insulin should help glucose to move to your cells and give you more energy. But then why does insulin resistance happen in the first place? Over time when cells become resistant to insulin, they do not start obeying the orders that insulin is giving to them. In turn, the blood glucose level or sugar levels will rise and that is what gives rise to multiple problems. What causes insulin resistance? There are several factors which can lead to insulin resistance and I'll highlight some of the common ones. Poor diet is the number one cause for developing insulin resistance. When you feed your body too much of sugars in any form, whether it is simple sugars, sugary syrups, desserts, or even excess of simple carbs, they all become an overload for the body. The body finds it difficult to handle that much sugar and gradually the pancreas starts getting tired out, does not respond well to the signals and that is one of the primary reasons why insulin resistance may develop. The second important cause is lack of physical activity or exercise. Physical inactivity reduces your body's ability to utilize insulin effectively. Third cause is stress. Chronic stress increases stress hormones like cortisol, which in turn will also dysregulate the insulin mechanism. The fourth common cause, very apt for our country, is obesity and increased weight. Excess fat, especially around the abdomen or a pot belly, is one of the common conditions which does lead to insulin resistance. The fifth cause is genetics. Yes, people who have diabetes or even have pre-diabetes are likely to transfer it to their future generations. The sixth, often forgotten one, is sleep problems. Poor sleep or sleep apnea also disrupts the insulin metabolism and hence is a very unrecognized but common cause of metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance. To make it more relatable, let us take an example of a typical Indian person. For many of us Indians, our typical diet and food involves a lot of carbohydrates. Be it our roti, chapati or even our rice. We tend to eat a lot of carbohydrates. To add to that list, we add on sugary chai or coffee with biscuits or other carbohydrate-rich processed foods. Pair that with long hours of sitting at a desk job or even at home maybe sitting in the office or the computer working while you are sitting. There is less or limited physical activity that one does typically. And also don't forget that we end up spending a lot of time scrolling our mobile phones, especially at night, maybe looking for health advice. But all this put together forms the perfect recipe for developing insulin resistance. Are you also at risk of this? Don't worry there's still hope. So now I'll tell you how to reverse this insulin resistance. The good news is that insulin resistance can usually be reversed with good sustained lifestyle changes. And here's how. The first thing is to improve your diet. Start by eating a balanced diet rich in whole foods. 
you may focus on foods which have low glycemic index for example whole wheat or brown rice are good alternatives to our regular food do try out the millets which are very nutritious tasty and have a low glycemic index these millets can be bajra jowar ragi whatever suits you do try them out too second you can also add on healthy fats yes fats also can be healthy and you may find them in nuts and seeds or fruits or foods like avocado the third important point in diet is to add protein to your diet that is something which is a often a missing component of our typical indian food this protein can be had through pulses and lentils you can also add in chana rajma whatever you find tasty for those who do not mind eating non vegetarian food they can also have their bit of meat or chicken to help their protein intake and the fourth important part in your diet would be to add on whole fiber foods these fruits and vegetables will provide a good amount of fiber that will reduce your sugar spikes and hence reduce the sugar absorption as well so all these small changes that you can do over time will give a lot of improvement in the condition of pre diabetes and insulin resistance the second important task for you is to exercise regularly yes exercise is one of the most effective and rapid ways to reverse your insulin resistance aim for 30 minutes of any exercise that you like it may be walking swimming jogging or even cycling which you can do at your own convenience aim for 30 minutes of exercise at least 5 times in a week and that itself is enough to help protect your body from the side effects of insulin resistance and if you can add on strength training or muscle training that also would be a big boost to improve your insulin metabolism the third important task for you would be to lose your excess weight if you are overweight losing even 5 to 10% of your body weight will drastically improve your insulin sensitivity and to achieve a weight loss make sure that you do not fall for any crash diets they will come back with a rebound aim for a sustainable and sustained weight loss which can happen with a good amount of mindful eating along with calorie deficit and ensuring that you exercise as well the fourth important point which i would definitely stress upon is to get regular peaceful sleep sleep is often overlooked when it comes to really taking care of insulin resistance and normal adults would need 7 to 8 hours of good proper sleep so create a bedtime routine less of screen time before you go to sleep and also aim for having your last meals at least 2 hours before you go to sleep all these things will definitely help you get back to your normal circadian sleep rhythm the fifth point which often may be difficult for some of us is to manage our stresses chronic stress creates havoc on not just our insulin but also on lot of our other hormones of the body try to incorporate stress reducing activities in your routine this may be following a hobby meeting friends or even talking it may be some activities that you love to do which can be art music dancing or you may like to do yoga with meditation these all stress reducing activities also are an integral part of managing insulin resistance the sixth important tip would be to stay hydrated when you drink enough of water your body would definitely flush out the excess amount of sugar so staying hydrated at all times is also a very important factor to manage your insulin problems the seventh tip again a part of diet but i'm taking it separately because it's a separate task altogether and that is to try intermittent fasting intermittent fasting or time restricted eating can help your body recover from the harmful effects of high insulin level it also changes the way your body will react or use up insulin it is said that insulin is the major driver for fat storage so if you are eating too much food even throughout the day each time you eat food your pancreas will develop more insulin than the body needs and all this leads to a condition where the insulin level sometimes becomes so high 
that now the body cells no longer want to listen to them. This all can be treated very well and reversed to a great extent by doing intermittent fasting. So the most common way that people do intermittent fasting is to eat within an eight hour window and keep a 16 hour window, which is a fasting period. For example, if you eat your dinner at 7 p.m., yes, 7 p.m., and have your breakfast next day morning by 11 a.m., then your body has enough of time to use up the extra insulin which is there circulating in your blood. But do check up with your doctor before attempting this yourself. And the last eighth would be the roles of medications and supplementations. Yes, I have put this as last because rest of the other things are probably much more important for you to do. Common medications that are often used to manage insulin resistance include metformin, which has been popularly used as a anti-diabetic medicine is also effective to reduce the chances of insulin resistance. Apart from this, omega-3 fatty acids, magnesium, vitamin D, these all are also known to reduce the insulin resistance and improve the insulin sensitivity of your body cells. Now, often someone questions me that insulin resistance, how does it really matter to me or what problems can insulin resistance create? So this fourth segment of this video is about what can be the harmful effects of insulin resistance. So this fourth section is about what can be the harmful effects of insulin resistance. As a vascular surgeon, I often see so many people and patients who come to us with artery blockages and insulin resistance is a very common finding in many of these patients. There is more and more scientific evidence which has shown that with insulin resistance and high circulating blood sugar or blood glucose levels, there is an increase in a protein called VCAM1, which is a kind of adhesion molecules. It tends to stick to the endothelium. So when this molecule sticks to the endothelium, it attracts more cholesterol, fat cells and inflammatory cells to go in, deposit there. And that is what starts forming an atherosclerotic plaque. So, high levels of sugar or high levels of insulin with insulin resistance can end up damaging the endothelium of your blood vessels which is the innermost lining of your blood vessels and this can trigger or accelerate a lot of artery blockages which can end up with different problems ranging from strokes heart attacks, leg attacks, and ultimately end up with amputation. So reversing insulin resistance is not just to stay away from diabetes, but it is also important for your heart and circulatory health. At the end, I'll take a few common questions which we have often been asked in our earlier videos with regards to insulin resistance. The first was, can insulin resistance be reversed completely? And the answer is a big yes. With the right lifestyle changes, insulin resistance is definitely reversible but the key is consistency the second question we were asked is how long would it take to reverse insulin resistance it actually depends on the problem but typically from a month to three months is when we would be able to see the results the third question very apt is is insulin resistance the same as pre-diabetes or diabetes well, no, they're technically different and that we've explained in another video. The last is what tests can detect this. There are a number of tests which can point towards insulin resistance or pre-diabetes and monitoring the sugar levels and HbA1c are the common ones, but rarely even the plasma insulin levels can be measured. And if you want to know what diabetes or insulin resistance can really do to your circulation, then this podcast will be an eye-opener for you.